Hey everyone, okay, so in today's video is a compilation video of four of my favorite techniques for eyeshadows. Now, I was trying to do a new video just recently, and of course, as some of you know, I have tennis elbow, and it's very, very painful at the moment, and that means that I'm unable to grip anything with any great strength, including an eyeshadow brush. So in this video, I have condensed down four of my favorite techniques for you. They're all timestamped below in the description bar, so you can skip to any one that you think will appeal to you. We've got the eye fi technique, the bigger eye technique, the straight line technique, and the open eye hooded eye technique. And they're all some of my favorite techniques, and I thought I would condense everything into this one incredible, incredible video and you can go through um, and see what you think. Also, you get to see me at various weights and with various hairstyles, <laughs> so that's always fun too. So thank you for watching. Um, got some videos coming up soon with reviews, which I can do because I don't have to use this bloody arm. Oh, and I will see you all very, very soon. Thank you, I hope everybody is doing well. I really do. Thank you so much and see you all soon, bye-bye. Hey everyone, okay, so today I'm gonna be talking you through the iFi technique and this is a technique that Ray Morris um, introduced in her amazing makeup book and I'll put a link to the book in the description bar because even though you're going to see this video it's worth buying because it's a treasure trove of information. But the iFi technique can be quite complicated especially when you're reading it. It's easier to see it. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to do it. Now bear in mind that the technique is to be used on your eye shape. So the final design on my eye shape will look different than yours because we all have different shaped eyes, but it will work universally. You just need to follow the principles. So I'm going to zoom in and we'll make a start. So the first thing you're going to need is a pencil and a really sharp one. So I'm going to etch this out with pencil format. So the first thing you want to do is find the lowest point of your eye. So where it dips the lowest. So that's gonna be here, kind of right in the middle of the eye. Then you wanna find the highest point, which is right here. So you just wanna draw a little dot so you can see it. The next thing you're gonna do is you are going to draw a line underneath the eye, and you want the line to be straight. You don't want to curve it around like this. You want this line here to basically be a straight line. Now this is where it can get complicated because as you can see that's more of a diagonal. That is absolutely fine. All you want to avoid is the curve. You want to avoid this under eye curving here. So you want to keep this line here straight and at this point you're just gonna stop because we'll connect it in a minute. So that's the first point, and it's easier to work with a pencil uh, to begin with because you need to find the placement. So what we wanna do is we wanna connect point A, which is here, so this is point A. We wanna connect point A to point B. So the easiest way, and again, in the book, it looks, the shape looks very rounded. It's a very round shape here. Um, Forget that, just think that you're now going to draw a line and it's gonna come up here and it, don't worry if it's rough and it's gonna reach the highest point. That's all you need to think about is, is it now level with this highest point? So when my eye is facing forward, you can see that it's now level with this highest point. So now you can close your eye and I'm just gonna, now fill in right here, this outside corner, and bring it to that top point, that little dot that we've just created. So bring it right to that top bit, and don't worry that it's not neat. You don't need to be concerned about that at the minute. So now all I'm gonna do is just fill in this little gap here of skin, because it's an annoying bit of skin, so you need to make sure that it's filled in. So if you're looking straight ahead in the mirror or in the camera, <clears throat> generally speaking, you'll see in a minute, this is the most flattering shape for my eye because it pulls the eyes apart. It gives the illusion the eyes are being pulled apart. So what I'm going to do is just going to take my finger because we used a pencil and I'm now just going to lightly start to smudge and blend this. So now what you've got is so it's slightly more blended 
than it was. Now you've got this space. Now this space here is gonna look different on everyone else because everyone's eye shape is different and we can fill that in at a later point. Make sure your pencil is sharp. So, now with Ray's technique, she extends the inside corner here um, with the eyeliner. We're gonna do that with shimmer instead in a minute. So I like to just fill in this outer corner a little bit darker because this tends to be the area of skin that is just ugly on a lot of people. And I have a vein that travels through my eye which makes it look like there's this crease there. So I'm gonna darken this area and then just use my finger to blend. So now we're just gonna use our pencil and in a very, <clears throat> excuse me, in a very faint line, we're just doing the eyeliner so that it meets this top bit. So now what I'm gonna do is take a very light brush and I'm just gonna extend this eyeshadow a little bit just to soften it, the edge. So now I'm gonna take that same brush and I'm gonna use a really light shimmering shade and I'm going to highlight this inner corner right here, but I'm over exaggerating it. So I'm over extending the tear duct area ever so slightly. And that will give the illusion that the eyes are longer than they really are. So the, now the eye is coming out here and it is coming out here. So we've extended the length of the eye. Remember, I'm using these colors to, um, so it shows up on camera. You can use any color you want and you can be as subtle as you want. So now we've got this inner corner here. Now we can add any color we want here. Predominantly though, it should be lighter. Now there's gonna be a lot of people asking, well, why have you stopped the shadow here? Why haven't you gone all the way in? The reason being is because by going in here, we're rounding the eye. And what we wanna do with the phi technique is pull the eyes out. So it's very Egyptian looking eyes. That's what we wanna do is to pull the eyeshadow out. We don't wanna round it. That's why I've stopped it before the halfway point or just before that high point because we wanna keep everything moving out. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a light shimmer shadow here and I'm just gonna blend it with my finger. Now when it comes to the um, brow bone, if you have very hooded eyes, highlighting this is just gonna really make it look bad. So just highlight, micro highlight the brow bone just to give a tiny, tiny touch of highlight. So next, I'm now gonna apply an eyeshadow over this. So we've got the design that we're looking for. So now I'm gonna go in with the Dolce Vita shade, the red shade from the palette. And I'm kind of just lightly going over what we've just done. Now I'm gonna use the same brush, but clean. And now I'm just gonna just feather the edges slightly. And you wanna be subtle here and you wanna be kind because you don't wanna, you don't wanna pull this up too high because we wanna go with the highest point of our eye. We don't want it to be too far up here. So just very lightly, just blend it. And it's gonna, it is gonna, move slightly, but the shape is still there. It's still this, this effect, which is just lovely on, on everyone's eye shape to just extend it slightly. So I'm gonna take that same shade and just go underneath the eye. Now I showed you the shape and how to create it with a pencil. 
But generally speaking, a shadow shield will work just the same and it'll be a lot quicker. So you still go underneath the eye in this straight line. Then you just stick the shadow shield on the outside edge and you see you can now go up with your eyeshadow and just create that straight line. So it's another way of doing it. So what I'm gonna do is put some mascara on and you can see the finished look from a slight distance and I'll pull up close as well. Because oftentimes I film in 4K, it can be very harsh when it's um, up close. And from a distance, you can really see that kind of um, Grecian effect, which looks really pretty. So there you go, that's the finished look. So lashes are done, mascara, all of that kind of stuff. So you can now get the idea. So just to reiterate, you find the lowest point of the eye, the highest point of the eye, and what you're doing is you're connecting them at this outside corner. So you're going straight across here and then up to the highest point. And then you're just blending. Now I obviously use my fingers with a, just a pencil, then a bit of eyeshadow. You could go in directly with eyeshadow, but it's just to create that kind of stencil effect so you can see where you're going. And you know, with this eye, you could make it look wider by putting white on the, or a lighter color on the inner corner, or you could make it look more seductive and darker, opening a darker color, which is my preferred preference. But you're still getting that, that feline effect because you've extended more on the inner corner, you've extended out on the outer corner, and you're not following your natural crease. So you're not rounding it too much here. You're stopping at that kind of highest point and just pulling things out. And that is the iFi technique. So I hope that made sense. Great to try it out on yourself to see how it, um, how it goes and looks. Bear in mind that the first few times you can do this can be quite tricky and complicated. It, it's not as easy as it looks. It does take a bit of practice, but just try and remember to not, you're not trying to draw a really straight line here and here, and then try and find it in the middle. You're just going straight across and then it kind of moves in a more of a diagonal. You're not, it's not a curve, it's straight, but then it starts to go in this diagonal. Then it's easier to connect it. And remember, you're connecting it to the highest point. So there is the highest point. So that's where you're coming up. I know, I hope that made sense. And I hope that you find this um, interesting and helpful and information on the book is in the description bar as well. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon, bye bye. Hey everyone, okay, so today we're gonna to be going through advanced eyeshadow techniques and this one is very cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just define the brow and extend the tail because we're gonna be using the tail of the brow as our guideline as well. So just sort the brows out. Now you'll notice as I'm going along through this tutorial that I'm going outside of my natural crease of the eye, where the eye turns down and stops. I'm gonna go way above that. And that's part of this technique. So the first thing I'm gonna do is apply a light eyeshadow. This is matte, but you can use whatever you want all over the eye. And I'm bringing that all the way up to the brow bone and to the tail of the brow. This technique works great for all eye shapes, so it's no issue, whatever eye shape you have. So when you've completed that, your eye should look clean. Next, we're gonna use a shimmery shadow and I'm applying this onto the eyelid because I want the inner corner to be nice and light reflective. With that complete, I'm taking a matte eyeshadow color, use whatever you want, and applying this into the crease of the eye all the way in and all the way out. And you can see already that I've gone outside of the corner of my eye. It's, I'm bringing it way further down and out I just want to get the shape. That's the point of this is we want to get the shape that we're looking for. So don't worry if it's halfway down your cheek because we're going to clean it all up. So apply this to the crease of the eye. Then I'm going on to the outside corner of the lower lash line as well. Again, you can see I'm going outside of that eye. You can see it almost looks like it's being pulled down. That's fine. Take a clean brush and blend the edges. And you can see as I'm blending, I'm blending in that kind of outward stroke which really helps to lift the eye. Taking a deeper color now, I'm applying this into the outside corner of the crease about a third of the way in, and I'm gonna do that onto the lower lash line as you can see as well. So you really just wanna place the color, doesn't matter about fallout because we're gonna clean all that up, that's why we do eyes first, so we can have a clean finish after. With that complete, blend again, 
always blend the colors and then layer as you go along as opposed to just keep putting on lots and lots of colors because it'll take forever. Taking your black eyeshadow now into that outer V of the eye, just on this outer corner, and then just blend the buggery out of it. And again, you can see I'm blending in that kind of horizontal way. Now we're gonna clean up all of that fallout, and this is where we clean up the edge of the eye. This is how we lift the eye. I'm using a cotton pad. Trust me, you can use a wet wipe. It's much easier to get that lift, but this is what I'm using. This is cleaning up and defining the shape of the eye. This will instantly lift the eye. I'm gonna apply foundation now so you can really kind of see that lift. So I'm just buffing on foundation. I'm using mineral foundation here because it's what I had on to begin with. Buffing this onto the eye, this brush is not available, sorry. So you can see that's much more clean. The eye is starting to take effect. I'm gonna apply concealer there now and then blend this with a beauty blender. And you'll see the lift and the shape of that eye is there now. It's going out to the tail of the brow, which is what we want. It's gonna give us a bigger eye and a more wider part eye. Connecting that corner because we've taken it outside the lines, it connects up really, really simply, as you can see. So the whole thing now forms this halo around the eye. Mascara, no idea which one this is, but it was absolutely shit, so don't worry about it. Apply this to the eye. Gonna apply a cold pencil into the water line. And this usually shrinks the eye, but you can see with this tutorial, it's opened up the eye because of this technique. More mascara, and that will complete the look. Practice it, it's really, really simple, and there you go. Thanks so much, look forward to reading your comments, make them nice, see you all soon, bye-bye. Okay, so, click it. you see this? Click my box. Now what, how good an offer is that? That's it, click my box. If you are suffering or have, you know when you're applying your foundation and suddenly every single hair on your face stands on end, it makes your face look, <clears throat> you know, much, no, no, really hairy and there's no need for it then click this box, that's, that's me, and it will take you to a video where I explain how to lay down foundation so that the hair on your face lays down really, really smoothly. You know that peach kind of fuzzy hair? So it lays down smoothly and you don't end up looking like Chewbacca. Thanks so much, bye-bye. Hey everyone, okay, so today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the straight line technique. Now the straight line technique is a very, very good technique for those of you with hooded eyes, very hooded eyes, or downward turned eyes. It also works for other eye shapes, but it's specifically used for the hooded and downturned eyes because it lifts the eye and gives the illusion that the hooded part of the eye, which is normally sort of this section here, recedes away from you and lifts up and out, which is, tends to be what we want with hooded eyes. Now the tutorial's coming next, you can sit there and watch and hopefully learn, so pick up some brushes and get going. The main principles behind the straight line technique is whenever you do crease work or socket work, as it's called, you, what comes up goes down. With a hooded eye or a downturned eye, this area is already coming down. So anytime you socket, you're bringing that area down. You don't want that. What we want is to lift it up and out, to pull it out, to lift it up, to give you the illusion of a more lifted eye, more space with the actual lid, but just to create the illusion that the eyes are turned up and not turned down. So follow the tutorial, see what you think. It's a pretty cool technique. It's a very, very simple one. You can use it freehand or with a stencil, like a piece of tissue, something like that. It's completely up to you. Let me know what you think and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Okay, so what you're gonna do is find the highest point of your eye, which is just above the pupil. This is a guideline. So I'm just showing this demonstration before we start. I'm gonna be using the Modernist palette by Hourglass. What I'm gonna do, because we're dealing with hooded eyes and downturned eyes, is I'm actually gonna start from the lower lash line. And this helps give me a guideline of how far out to bring the eyeshadow, as you'll see. So I'm applying the first shade to the bottom lash. Now I'm applying a dot at the highest point of my eye where my eye is open. This is gonna give me a guideline. Now I'm gonna use a tissue here. 
After you do this technique enough, you won't need to use the tissue, but this is just for placement. Place it on the outside corner of where you put that lower color. Now you're gonna draw a straight line from the dot that you've just created on the top lid, straight the way out, right the way out. So you're reaching your guideline and it's a completely straight line. It's very important that this line is straight and it does not curve down. If anything, it can curve up, but never down. So you can see the line is completely parallel. Now you're gonna fill in this space with color. So just fill in those outside corners, but remember the line is straight, it's never gonna curve down, that's only gonna emphasize the fact that the eye is hooded or the eye is downturned. So just fill in that space and remove the template. Now we're not gonna leave this harsh edge, but first we're gonna apply some color just to the brow bone area. Now we're gonna blend that color. The reason I've removed the stencil for blending is so we don't leave a hard line. We want the edge to be soft, so we need to blend this. So I'm blending it in with a blending brush and all these brushes are available in the description bar below. Now we're gonna extend it up and out so it reaches the tail of the brow. But we're doing this very softly. We just wanna take away that really sharp edge and leave behind that slightly upturned eye that we've just created. So by having that straight line, we're no longer creating that downward turn that can happen as we get older with the eyes. I'm applying a light shadow to the inner corner of the eye, moving it in as we go along, and then I'm taking that same shadow and just going back along the lash line. You wanna curl the lashes really well, and then apply mascara. Give this technique a few goes, and then you can remove the template, and you'll be able to do it with your eye open straight away. This just lifts and opens the eyes, and is an amazing tutorial and way to do hooded eyes and downturned eyes. It's a great way. Applying concealer and that will complete the look. So you can see the eye has that slight wing to it, that slight cat effect, and it will lift up downturned eyes. Thank you, bye bye. Hey everyone, okay, so today is a video and we're gonna be talking through it. It's gonna be longer. Um, yes, I have been to the gym and I'm not even gonna put on a shirt and pretend that I'm fancy. We're going to be dealing with hooded eyes again. Full tutorial showing you how to go about it. Now, not the best day to do this because a couple of weeks ago I got some retinal cream on my eyelids and it caused them to flake and look like 100 years old. What can you do? Um, this is a brand new camera, so if it's strobing in the background, now I can't see it on the monitor, but if it is, I apologize and I will get it fixed. So the first thing I'm going to do is just prep the eye so I'm applying a loose translucent powder. Oh, that bit of dry skin there. Um, I'm applying a loose bit of translucent powder. That's it, just to prep the eyes. So I'm gonna be working from this palette. So let me get up close. But truthfully speaking, I'm only gonna be dealing with this brown shade. That's pretty much gonna be it. So I'm gonna take my number 20 brush. Now this is a really small brush. And this is how we're gonna go about it. I'm going to dip this into the product and knock it off. You're going to do almost all of this with your eyes open because we don't walk around like that. So, you know, it makes sense to keep your eyes open, particularly with hooded eyes. Now on my eye, technically it's a semi hooded eye. It's really even not a hooded eye, but this bit of skin here is annoying. And that's where most of the trouble is on people with hooded eyes, it's right here. Now, I've got a vein that travels right through here and it's one that comes out from the skin. And it can make things look distorted when I apply color over it, it's a problem. So, here you go. Look straight in the mirror and draw over the hooded area with your eye completely open. Just draw straight forward. Don't worry if it comes onto the lid as it is with mine. That's gonna happen if you've got small lids or hooded lids. So just look straight forward and draw over that hooded area. Now, we're gonna start to blend it. So I'm picking up my brush. This is my go, oh, go on, focus. Focus your new camera, there you go. So I'm gonna take this and now I'm going to start to blend and again you can see that I'm doing it with my eye open so I can see where it's going. Now I've got two mirrors, one that's all the way over there, which is a mile away, and one that's right here, which is angled. 
it ain't gonna turn out good. So you just wanna soften this color. Now you can use any color you want. I'm just using brown because I love brown. Okay, so let's go back in again. This time we're gonna try and get in here so if you have to lower your lid, lower your lid, and then bring it down onto that lower part of the lid, so the hooded area here. And the reason I'm not doing this is because the eyelid wrinkles, and then you get the shadow into the kind of wrinkles, so I'd rather kind of manipulate the skin to keep it as taut as possible. And now I'm just going back in, looking forward into that. So you can already see, I hope, that this area looks better because it's got some color there, it's got some darkness, so it's receding away from us. So again, having a jolly good day, blending. It's absolutely freezing outside. It is so cold, you've no idea. It's the middle of March and it is freezing. So if you're having trouble blending, then, well, do you know what? I'm not even gonna tell you that. That's for another video, because if I tell you now, I won't have another video. And then where will be? I'll have to be making bizarre videos going, oh my God, you know what happened today, and I don't wanna do that. So, just blend. Now I'm blending up as well to soften the line right up here at the crease. So I'm just gonna soften that a little bit. Beautiful. Don't worry about the lower lid or anything else. Now, because the hooded area tends to come about almost halfway, that's how far I'm bringing the deeper shadow. And then I'm gonna blend it in. Don't you run away from me, brush. So just blend it in. Now, we're not gonna pull it out. We just ain't. It's not gonna happen. We're, this is my eye shape. We're just gonna follow, you know, we're just gonna follow our eyes. I can see strobing in the background. One second. Shouldn't be strobing anymore. Better not be. So I'm gonna take my little brush and I'm gonna dip it in the exact same color, brown. Just gonna make sure that there's not too much on there. So I'm just kind of knocking it off a little bit. And with my eye open, I'm gonna start on the lower lash line and just connect these colors. And by connecting it, you're creating that circle of color, which wraps around the eye. Okay, so it's wrapped all the way around. Granted, I've used a dark brown. Again, use beige, use taupe, use purple, whatever makes you happy. I'm just going to very lightly blend this in. Now the reason that I, not in this tutorial, but <clears throat> the reason that I prefer to extend the shadow out is because as I mentioned, I've got this really weird um, vein that comes through and the vein comes out farther than my own actual eyelid. So the vein actually stops here, which is why I tend to prefer to pull it out because it disguises that a little bit more but we're following the eye shape for this tutorial. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more blending going just here in that inner corner. Now that's absolutely splendid. I think it's absolutely splendid. Um, your brow bone, you can put shimmer on it, you can put matte on it. Um, I'm gonna go for a matte, so I'm just gonna go for that color here. It's, it's just a beige, it's like a, a, a light beige. And I'm just going to apply that to the brow bone and not too much. You don't want it too thick there because you, you were trying to minimize an area here. Um, I'm going to take the same brush and I'm now going to place that on this area. Again, my eye is not closed. Right here on this inner corner because we want to make sure that the, the lid you do have, the lid that is showing, you know, we want it to be open and bright. So if all you've got is this bit showing, then just highlight that, who cares? And just build up the color and lightness however you want. And then just knock it off from your brush. 
and then blend the two colours in, just marry them so that they blend a little bit better. Splendid! Now, what you really need to do now is to pick your ear and then you need to curl your lashes and apply mascara. So we'll do that. And the, the thicker, blacker and blacker and blacker the lashes you can get, the more beautiful a hooded eye will look because it will appear more open. Actually, we're gonna do, we are gonna do something else because there is just um, something else that I wanna do. I'm gonna take a combination of the beige and the white. So I'm just gonna go back and forward and I'm just gonna highlight the teared up area here a little bit more because I just think that it'll open up the eye a tad more. And when you think you've gone a little bit, like it's a bit too heavy, then just knock it off and just blend it in, or you can get a Q-tip, but whatever. And you don't want to stop, so we've gone around, but now you want to blend it in so that the brown gently so it's not just light dark it's you know it's moving into each other okay mascara okay so mascara is on and i actually added um one of the eve pearl lashes as well because these are really good and they just help to kind of open up the eye a little bit more so i'm just going to clean up underneath the eye okay that's it that's done so I've just cleaned up under the eye with a little bit of concealer, but that's pretty much it. The, the way that this is working is that the lashes are shorter just than the actual deep eyeshadow that I've put on. And that's why they kind of work really well. So when applying false lashes, I kind of prefer to kind of marry up your lashes with the fake lashes if that makes sense so that they're both um that they're, they're joined they've got a happy marriage and there you go that is it so just to reiterate what we did we with our eyes open we applied a dark shadow to the hooded part we then blended it we brought the color in as far as the hooded part was and blended again then we did underneath the eye and once we finished with that we then applied a lighter color to the inner corner and we applied mascara and or, you know, a fake lash if it's your thing. And that is it. That is the video. It's a long one today. You lucky people. Thank you so much and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.